Okay, guys. Um, I actually, um, I actually did the whole thing, and it wasn't recording because I'm not used to this software. So we can want to do it again. Um, okay, what we're basically doing is my friend Steve had a 2D design he did in draft site. Wants to bring it into Fusion, make it 3D. Um, that's how I do mine too. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do a draft site video. Uh, sometime later and go over like how I design and all that and then this will kind of be part two of that so but this is fusion you guys are going to learn a few things about fusion um, this is the data panel so this is a parts folder I have and I have like my pivots and stuff in here um, there's an orphan folder folders for other makers Karen Klein Brandon Klein um, I made one for Steve Nova Blades. If you haven't checked out his stuff, check them out. They're awesome. So um, it's already in here. We're not going to do that. We're going to do it again from scratch <laughs> because it's completely done. But um, I forgot to hit record, I guess, or I paused it, I think is what happened. Anyways, um, what we want to do is go ahead and save it right off the bat and make sure it's in the right one. This is the Mutt. A because I didn't do it before. Um, save it. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a DXF file. So it's asking you what plane you want to do it on. Um, I usually just do the bottom plane. Doesn't really matter. You can do this one. You can do this one. Um, select DXF file. It's on my downloads. There it is. Mutt DXF. Now when you see, you see it pop up, it says single sketch, or you can do one sketch per layer. Um, Steve does it the same way I do. We put all our components on different layers. It makes it a lot easier to move around when you're designing. So we're going to do one sketch per layer, hit OK. And it brought them all in right over here under sketches. The light bulb turns things on and off. Turn off the clip, hardware. Um, Oh, that's what, okay. I was having a problem earlier, and that's why the hardware is on a separate layer, but that's not a big deal. Everything um, you're going to do in Fusion usually starts out as a sketch, okay? Um, for instance, if I wanted to make a, let's say I'm going to make a, uh, I'm just going to show you this real quick. If I wanted to make a uh, fixture plate, it's going to be a rectangular piece of, you know, aluminum. Um, I would select that, and it's going to, it should ask us, Select a plane or planar face. It should show, but it's not. There it is. Yeah, these. So you can select one of those. You can draw it out. So that's a sketch now. Okay. If you hit stop sketch, you can right click, press pull, make it into a 3D object. All right. So everything. Let's get rid of those. So everything's based around um, sketches. But just because I deleted the sketch, the body's still here. If I if I manipulate the sketch, it'll change the body. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is I always start with the blade. We're going to do everything at three sixteenths. Um, and there's two ways to um, extrude it. You can either press pull it, right click, press pull. You can hit E for extrude, extrude it out. And I'm just making everything three sixteenths. 0.175. Um, it didn't do this last time either. And when you extrude something, it turns the sketch off for some reason. It didn't extrude this. Um, and last, so lot, last time what I did was right click, edit. You can see when I mouse over the blade, the pivot's a different color right here. And when I mouse over the pivot, the blade's a different color. That means for some reason this thing isn't connected or something. Last time all I did was move this point right here and this point. I think something might not have been completely connected. And there it goes. That's what we needed. Stop sketch. Press pull. And to rotate around I'm doing shift and middle mouse button and then drag it. Red means cut. See cut. You can also join it, intersect it, new body. There's a bunch of different options. We want to cut it. Okay. So there's our hole in the blade. All right, save it, save often. I can't say that enough. Um, oh man, 
I completely redid the um, the lock bar and everything. So I'll, I'll show you how to do that again. All right, so we're doing the handle. Notice when I select this handle, it's dotted here and then dotted here. It'll show if you got a hundred things in here, it helps it be much easier to find. But let's say it's not selected and I want to modify it. If I select three point arc, it's going to, if you leave the mouse B, it'll give you a, like a heads up, select a planar, planar face. We want to do this one. So what I'm going to do is go in here. We're just going to round this off real quick. Boom. Okay. Hit escape to get out of it. Select these three. And I'm shift selecting here. Sketch. Trim. And trim these. And then hit escape. And then what we want to do is select these again. Go under sketch. Offset. I usually do all this in draft side. It's actually far easier in um, Fusion to do this offset though. I did 20 thousandths, which is really thin. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but let's do 30. Cut. And then, okay. So what we need to do now is connect these. So I'm just going to use another three point arc. Boom, boom, boom. And then hit escape to get out of that. I'm going to trim these. Shift select. And trim. I might just put that at the top. It looks like the hotkey is T for that. And well. Okay. Three. And then that one again. Okay, yeah, I had to do that last time on that. Alright, cool. So that's cut out. That's how you do that. Stop sketch. Alright, so we're gonna extrude this. You can see it's on the bottom plane of the blade, so when we extrude it, we're gonna extrude it this way. Negative point one eight seven five. Alright. And then We've got to go in. I found with these, it's easier to hit E, extrude, and select that. See over here, that's actually for the profile. Drag it through. Red cut. Good. Turn handles back on. And then we're going to extrude this one this way. That way when we move it, we know we only have to move it 0.1875. When I'm just modeling stuff to show, See, it's on the same plane as the blade. When I'm just modeling stuff to show, I don't worry about the gap for the bearings. So we're going to move it this way. 0.1875. And then that way all the pieces, yeah, should be lined up. And then we have to hard, turn the hardware back on. E, select this bad boy. Boom. Okay. So that's it. Um, here's how we move stuff around. Let's turn these sketches off. Select the piece you want to move. Move. Um, we're going to move point to point. So I want to select the inside of this pivot, right? Zoom out. I'm using middle mouse button. Then select this. And make sure that little crosshair circle pops up in the middle so it's perfectly aligned like that. See that? And then to move this one, you can turn these off. Oh, something I didn't do. Um, let's hit OK. I always rename these. See right then I didn't know which was the lock and press. Bald. Yeah, that's good. Uh, where's delete? Delete. Alright, so blade. And no matter what knife I'm doing, all these always have the same name. Um, there's not a huge reason for it, it's just the way I do it. So turn off lock, move this one, right click move, point to point, we want this, we want this, boom. Turn the lock back on, there we go, beautiful, save it. Okay, so now we'll do the backspacer. 
Let's see where it's at. Okay, so it's right there. We want to pull it, or we want to, when we press pull it, we want to, whoops, turn sketches on. We want to press pull it this way, 0.1875. Oops. 0.1875. Okay, and uh, new body. And then to move that in the right spot, right click move. Point to point again, this point, this point. Okay. Save it. Okay. Um, this is how we do the chamfers. It's pretty easy. You want to shift select all your chamfer lines. I think there's a little one in there too. Oh. Well. point. If you left that point selected, I don't think it would bother anything. Um, so just shift select all your chamfers. Chamfers is under modify. I went ahead and put it up here. So click chamfer. Um, 0 0.08, 0 0.09 is about half the distance. Um, you know, you can do 0.1, have a heavier chamfer. 0.15. Oops, too much. 1.6 maybe? Nope. Looks like 1.5. Oh, I don't know. That's getting some weird stuff going on. Alright. Let's just go 0 0.08. Um, so that's how you do a chamfer. It's pretty easy. To do the other side, same thing. Just select all these. Shift select. Just right around the lock bar. Chamfer. Now, when you've already done one, it'll automatically give you. Now, I got this error last time I did this. It's weird. Three selected two. Let's clear that out. Reselect these edges. All right, it's doing it as we're doing it. Let's turn that off. That sometimes does weird stuff. I always select the edges before. One, two, three. Oh, jeez. Three, four, five. Six. Seven. Oh man. You gotta be kidding me right now. Save it. Okay. Didn't do it last time. I have no idea why it's deselecting stuff. As you notice, it'll put the same distance you did last time, which is kind of nice. All right, so both sides are chamfered. I'm going to save it. And now we're going to do the blade. I'm not sure how the grind goes on this, so I'm just going to show you, and then you can do it. Um, this is where it crashed last time, by the way, and then I noticed it wasn't recording. So uh, we're going to do a sketch. We're going to do it on this, on the actual side of the blade. So we select the curve and then we select the blade. Um, first thing I usually do is you draw two lines around the perimeter, kind of like this. Depending on the shape of the blade, is it'll depend on the lines. Um, and then we draw, don't worry about the sweeping plunge, that'll come later. Just put them in there square like this. Um, so like that. Stop sketch. All right, turn your sketches back on. 
Um, we're going to jump ahead. We need to create a mid plane because after we do this, we're going to mirror it over and we need a plane to mirror around. Construct mid plane. If you stop the mouse, select two planar faces, plane sketch profile. So we're going to select this face, this face. And then, well, where's our plane at? That's weird. Oh, I can't see it. Let's undo that. Let's do it again. Turn these sketches off. Construct mid plane. What the hell? That should have a thing pop up over here. I don't know why it's not doing that. Maybe because sketches is off? Select two planner. That's weird. And it's showing a plane, but it's I don't see it. There it is. Why is it over here? Well, it usually puts it right in between the blade. I don't know why it's putting it way down there. It should work though. So here's what you do. Width of the blade is 0.1875 minus the 15 thousandths of the cutting edge is 0.08625. So what you want to do is select this piece here, press pull it in, negative 0.08625, enter. Then we're going to mirror it, and that's what we need that plane for. Create mirror, select the objects. The objects we want are this, this, and this. The mirror plane is this. Hit OK. There it is. All right, we're going to save it real quick because this is where it crashed last time. And I'll tell you why I usually will do that. What we're going to do is fill it right here. All right, click that, select this. Oops, wrong one. So you can click this to unselect it. The one that one right there. Now pull it down super, super slowly. If you go too far off the blade, it'll lock up and crash because it's trying to fill it what's not there, so to speak. So just get it where it just goes off the blade, like right there, stop, five inches. Hit OK. Save it. Because then, as you can see, oh boy, hold on. OK. As you can see, you don't have the sweeping plunge, but the way you get that is you fill it this here, right here. Super slow. Whoops. Pull it out. And then there's your plunge. Um, I went really far last time and it crashed, but because you can get you can get a really nice sweeping plunge like that. There you go. I did it. Alright, so how do you get that to the other side? Um, well, you can mirror it. Um, Let's see if it'll work with that already there. Create mirror. Select these two. Select your mirror plane, which is here. Let's see if it'll work. Error. Yeah. I didn't think it would. Anyways, we remember. That's why I remembered how much we did this. We did this one five. Whoops, not that one. Did this one five. And then, actually, I'm not sure how far we did this one. We'll just eyeball it, though. But And usually, I'll mirror these, but I had some problems last time. I couldn't get it to mirror, so I think it was right about there. That looks good. One, two, four. Yeah. Yep, I think that's perfect. So then there's your blade bevel. Um, not sure what else to show you. Um, like with mine, I keep my pivots in my parts right here. So if I want to bring my pivot in, I just have the pivot in here. Insert into current design. And then it'll bring it in and it'll have you move it where you want it. So 
See right now it's turned the wrong way, so we'd want to rotate it 90 degrees and then let's see, move it closer. I don't actually put it in there yet. Hit OK. Save it. Um, and then usually you can just move one at a time. So select this one, move um, point to point. Let's see, select that outside one because I have it countersunk, so that'll countersink it perfectly. Select this one, move, select point to point. You want this ring in here. Boom. Done. And that's it. Um, this is how you rotate your blade. Go with the top view. All right. You want to move the blade. So move. Set your pivot dead center. And hit the green check. And then I know from last time it was 177 degrees. So 177. And then that should be it. So there it is closed. You'll notice I don't have the bearing spacing in there, but all you'd have to do is move the handle out 15 or 20 thousandths, however um, thick your bearing is. So that's it. Um, if there's anything else, you know, I can edit this or add to it. Um, you can champ for these a little if you want. Be a nice look. Like 0 0.02, 0 0.01. Yeah, you can do all that. Um, you can chant for all this. Um, there's a lot to it, so hopefully that helps. And um, if you have any questions or want me to show you something else, uh, just let me know. All right, thanks.